Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In this video, we're going to return to our project in the SAP Web IDE for SAP HANA, and we'll continue doing development in the database layer. So let's go back And if you remember at the end of the last video, we had ran the project wizard, which had generated our database module and our service module in Node.js. And we had manually added a web module uh, with our little hello world. Now, for the next few uh, videos, we want to begin to build out our database content. Um, but first, even before we start building any database artifacts, any views or tables or anything like that, let's go ahead and, and just take a look at and begin to use what the wizard generated for us. So one of the first things I want to do here is I want to go ahead and, um, and tell it to, uh, uh, to show hidden files. I already had it turned on, but, but the default is to, to not have it turned on. So let's, let's go ahead and click here and, and have it show hidden files. I want to show you some of the behind the scenes stuff uh, that goes along with this database module. Now, uh, one of the important things that we have here is if we look at this HDI config file in the root of uh, our source folder. So this is usually how the database module is laid out. Um, normally you just have a package JSON in the root. We're, we're doing some CDS. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that uh, in the, uh, in the next uh, video, um, but a database module at least has a package JSON. The package JSON tells it what version of the deployer to use. And once again, the deployer that actually deploys the content into the HANA database is not written in the database itself. Um, and, and it's not written in C++ like the rest of the HANA database. It's actually an, an application server. Um, uh, part and it is written in Node.js and that means that we can target a particular version of the deployer. Now the wizard put in 3.7.0 which is a, uh, a very recent version. I don't need to change that but if I wanted to target a particular version I could. It also means that because this is a Node.js package it's actually published out on the internet um, in SAP's public NPN repository, and we can update it there just by pushing new versions out in the in the public repository. So you don't have to apply a patch to your HANA system or the Web IDE or or XS Advanced to pick up new functionality in in this deployer. This is something we heard from customers that you know the business doesn't really want to put on a bunch of support packages real often. But developers often want access to the latest features and capabilities and, and important fixes. Um, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. We can we can patch just really tiny parts of the system, like just the just the deployer, um, and we can put those patches out on the internet. And you don't need your basis people to download, install, or, or or do anything. Just by changing this version uh, of the deployer, you can. Um, uh, you can get access to, to, to newer versions. All right, so that's, uh, that's a little behind the scenes there of the package JSON. The other uh, part that I wanted to show you here is the HDI config. Now this tells that HDI deployer about the HANA backend that you're targeting. And for the most part, you can kind of ignore all these different uh, file suffixes. It just basically says if a uh, if a database artifact has a certain file extension, then this is the plugin uh, that it should use on the server side when it when it deploys. It allows us, if you wanted to, you could configure different file extensions uh, to point to different database artifacts. I don't think most people probably ever mess with the uh, with this mapping. They just let what the wizard generates and uh, and they go with it. But the part that is important and and might have to be edited is actually this part, the plugin version. This should actually match up to the version of HANA that you're targeting. And if we were to create a, a new database module, let me just do this real quick. We won't, we won't keep it, but I just want to show you what, would, what it looks like. Um, if I choose a new database module, there's a part here where it asks me what 
version of the HANA database do I want to target? And this is all because XSA and the Web IDE are backwards compatible. So you can always run the latest version of the Web IDE, but maybe not have updated your HANA database. This was also something we heard from customers is they wanted to be able to have the latest development tools, um, but their business didn't necessarily want to have the disruption of upgrading the whole HANA database. So maybe you're targeting an older version of HANA. Maybe your HANA is only on 2.0 SPS02. Or maybe your development system has been upgraded, but your production system hasn't been upgraded yet. Maybe you're going through this time while you're, while you're testing an upgrade. And you want to do development in your dev system, but you want to make sure that you don't accidentally use features that would be present in your production system when, when you get there. So although you might have the latest Web IDE and it show you all the great new features in the calculation view editor and new node types and, and things like that, you don't necessarily want to use those if they're just going to cause errors when they get to production because it's an older release. So at any time, you can actually target a particular version of HANA. So for instance, if I were to create a new module, I could say, well, I want to target HANA 2.0 SPS01. And then all the editors in the Web IDE for this project will gracefully downgrade and not show me features that wouldn't be possible in the target HANA system. Now, this is something we can choose at the time of the wizard, but maybe you need to edit it after you've ran the wizard. So let me actually exit out here. Yes, I do want to exit the wizard. The way you edit this is with the HDI config file. At any time I can come in and I can change the version number here. Let's say tomorrow I upgraded from 2.0 SPS 03 to 2.0 SPS 04. I would just change the version number in the HDI config and then it would target that newer version. Or, you know, like I said, maybe I need to go back to an older version, even though my Web IDE is newer, and I would just change this file, and then the editors and the syntax check and, and everything will, will degrade and, and make sure that I don't use newer features. Now, for our project, we're running on HANA 2.0 SPS 03, um, so we'll just go ahead and leave it there with what the, uh, uh, what the, what the wizard generated, but it's, it's good to know uh, that that's there and that's possible. Now, the other thing that we want to do here is the uh, project wizard, when we created our project, it did create the DB module for us and it put uh, the DB module into the web IDE uh, and it already configured a resource. The resource, this HDI container, that is our resource inside the Hunter database. Now, it doesn't actually exist yet. We've only defined it at design time. We haven't done a build of that module yet. So actually nothing exists in the HANA database that was created by our project yet. And before we, we create anything here, I actually want to add on to what the wizard generated. Um, I know that down the road in my project, I'm going to have more than one resource attached to my database module. And, and that's fine. You'll see why we do that later. It's, it's how we can connect to other schemas, other existing HDI containers, basically other database content than, than just what's local in my project. But once you have more than one resource attached to your database module, we have to extend the configuration here and we basically have to tell it which resource wants to be our primary resource. And we do that uh, by coming here to the, uh, to the configuration and create a property here and uh, I just want to make sure I spell everything right. Uh, I'll add a property named target container. There, I remembered it from when I did it before. And then HDI container name. And this is a, this is a variable um, that will contain the, the actual name. We don't want to hard code the actual resource name. That would be bad because that, that could change. So what we see here is when the resource was created, it created uh, the wizard also created a property which becomes one of these variables that we can use elsewhere and it's going to take the built-in variable that has the service name dynamically populated into it and expose it as a, as a reusable variable that can be uh, uh, used when we, we declare that as a requirement. So this is where we've set up this HDI container name. Uh, the wizard did that part for us and all we have to do is 
go into the require section of the database module and basically tell it, well, your target container is this HDI container name. And that would be filled at deploy time with the actual resource name. And we're not hard coding anything. That's, that's good. All right. Now, like I said, we haven't actually created anything in the database yet. We only ran the web module. And when you run or build a single module, it just deploys that one. It doesn't deploy the entire project. So what we can do now is we can come here and we can build just our database module. Now there's nothing in it. There's no content yet. But the first time that we build it, it's going to establish the connection to the HANA database. It's actually going to go ahead and create a schema in the HANA database, and it's going to create users for our project because we no longer use the uh, technical user sysrepo to create database artifacts uh, from design time objects. Um, the concept of using a technical user was good, but the flaw in the old HANA repository was is that we had one all-powerful technical user called sysrepo. What we do in this new environment is we still want uh, to have a technical user so that individual developers don't don't create objects and, and own them and have to grant access to them. We want that to be system controlled so it's stable over time. But we don't want it so that project A and project B share the same technical users. So at the time that I first build this database module, not only does it do the initial setup, but it creates users, technical users in the database for me. And I don't have to worry about managing them. It's, it's going to create names. There's just going to be long strings so that they're unique. It's going to generate very long, complex passwords. I'm never going to see those passwords. I'm not going to log in as these technical users. But any time that, that I build and, and, and start creating tables and views, it will not be my user ID. It will not be this workshop 00 that creates them will be the generated technical users. So there's always this layer of abstraction that keeps my user from, from actually being the one that does anything in the database. So I'll come here to the database module and I'll go ahead and tell it to build. And it will take a second as it uh, actually copies out the deployer and then runs the deployer as a Node.js application injects the content, which we don't really have any content yet, but then communicates the HANA database and, and creates things. So what we see here is it's creating an instance of our HANA service. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's what starts the process of, of creating the corresponding schema and technical users in the database. Here we see it connecting to the database um, and, and performing the actual build. Um, and if I scroll back, it's going faster than I can talk about it. Um, it uh, we see here the, uh, let me scroll back up. It's actually finished now, but let's talk about what all it was doing here. Um, so we see it is taking the content, it's pushing it in. Uh, we can see our target version uh, and which node version it's using to do the deployment. That's nice information to have. Uh, we can see that it is creating the schemas Notice it took like our project name and then it took the resource name uh, and it's creating that as a uh, schema inside the database. At the same time that it's creating those schemas, it's creating the technical users. Uh, and then you see there's not a whole lot for it to deploy here yet. It's a little bit of wizard generated uh, example content that that was all that, that it had to deploy. But... Uh, that doesn't really matter. We're, we're, we're going to wipe that out in the next instance. But the main thing is, is that we now have content in the database. Now, we want to go look at that. We want to verify that that exists. Uh, we don't go to the HANA Studio. We would not be able to see these schemas. They would be hidden from the HANA Studio, uh, nor would we have access to see them. Our, our user ID, our database user ID, is not going to have access to these schemas. Instead, we're going to use the Database Explorer, uh, remember that we talked about this Database Explorer tool in, in video two uh, and, and explained how it's kind of the, the equivalent of the HANA Studio catalog view. Uh, and here we saw our existing tenants and how we can see the schemas and the different uh, objects inside those, um, uh, inside those tenants. But we're not going to connect that way. We're going to create another uh, dedicated connection here 
uh, to an HDI container, uh, create a special kind of connection so that we're not connecting with our user ID, we're not specifying user ID and password. Instead, we're going to be connecting with the generated technical users. So I can tell here is my my uh, container name. Notice it took my my username and this uh, unique ID. Once again, multiple developers could work on the same project at the same time. They don't override each other in the database. We're getting a private copy of our database artifacts, and that's what we're seeing here. It's keep, uh, remaining unique um, because of uh, because of that. Uh, but we don't have to keep this big long name here. We can go ahead and give it a, a, a shorter name. We'll just call this Core DB. It doesn't matter what we name it. That's just the the visual name that'll show up in the tooling. So we'll say OK and it will establish a connection and and now we don't really have any database content yet except that sample content but you can see yes there are a couple tables uh, in the next exercise we'll, we'll go about actually creating the content that we want uh, but eventually you know we're gonna have stored procedures and calculation views and all kinds of stuff and this is going to be the tool that we're going to use to interact with the runtime objects these these objects now exist in the database and likewise i can open a sql console and from the SQL console, I can execute SQL that's going to execute inside the, the schema of this application. For instance, I might say select current schema from dummy and run that. And you'll see there's our schema name, open SAP HANA, open SAP HANA, HDI container. So it's created a unique schema name um, based upon the the data that we, that we gave it in... Um, uh, you know, our project name and, and the resource name. Uh, more interesting might be is um, select current user. And there we see this big, long username. This is the generated user. Um, we didn't have to specify anything to have this created. We didn't have to do any admin things. I, I'm not hiding anything from you here. Just the build process of the database module did all this for us. The HDI deployer did all this work. And anytime that I'm accessing this container, if I'm selecting from this container, the select is being performed not by my user ID, which would not have any access, but by this user ID. And that's why we have to use this special database explorer tool to browse the content and, and interact with it because it's going to do this abstraction and, and, and automatically use the technical user that way, my user ID, this workshop user, uh, workshop 00, actually has almost no database access at all. I, ca I can't go to a third-party tool or, or go back to the old HANA Studio and really see much of anything in the database. It's only when I use the Database Explorer and, and route my request through this technical user that I'm able to, uh, to see anything and interact with the system. And that creates a good separation of security. My developer user doesn't get overloaded with extra security. I have a technical user, but it's a technical user per application. And we see the, uh, the layer here that if a, a different developer would check out the same project, they could build this database module as well, and they would get their own separate copy in its own schema with its own technical users, and they could work in parallel to me, maybe work on a completely different part of the project, and, and my development doesn't mess them up, and, and likewise, their, their development is not visible, nor does it disrupt my development. So it allows you to work isolated in a sandbox environment, uh, but still a single HANA instance, a single HANA MDC client. We're not creating extra uh, database containers. These are really just separate schemas in the database, and it's only the, the logical rules and the security that's, that's uh, created automatically by the HDI deployer that, that creates a nice sandboxed separation. Uh, so I know we haven't really started creating much of anything yet, but it's an important first step to have established our connection to the database, generated our database container, which in turn generates our database schemas and our technical user. Now we're ready in the next exercise uh, to really begin to, to start to create some actual database content.